So the most common uh, type of diagnostic test is known as a leak-off test or many, many names, actually. Uh, a mini-frag, uh, a formation integrity test or a, that's a fit or defit diagnostic formation integrity test or uh, as kind of what's pictured here is something called an extended leak-off test. So typically what you might uh, say is a leak-off test would be a standard leak-off test would just include this kind of first part of the curve uh, as opposed to this extended leak-off test in which you're actually going to propagate a fracture for some time. Okay. So the way these tests are performed um, is that in fluid is injected at a constant rate, okay? So constant injection rate. And along this part of the curve, you should see this proportionality. And this, if you were to stop injecting at any point before anything else happens, you'd just say that this is a, a limit test or, or a formation integrity test. In other words, um, you know, as you're drilling, you may stop and do one of these to try to determine what the principal stresses are so that you can determine, uh, you know, what your frac gradient's going to be uh, so that you can get some information about your, your window, mud window, right? So if you're going along and you stop drilling and you do one of these and you don't take it up, I mean, you, you get to pressures that are high enough that you say, okay, well, the minimum stress, you know, I'm not initiating any fractures, so... I'm good, I'm just going to stop and go on. Well, in that case, uh, you know, you'd call this a limit test or, or a formation integrity test. So in that case, all you can say is that the minimum, the minimum principal stress is higher than what you pressured up to, okay? But <clears throat> if you continue uh, to pressure this up, you will see an inflection in the curve, okay? And so that inflection point where there's a, the point where there's a distinct change in slope, this point right here is known as the leak-off point. And so this is the point that's assumed ignoring resistivity near the well bore that could be associated with um, high viscosity fluid or something like that. Or if you're doing this test in a cased well where you've performed perfor perforations in the well first, the perforations can cause this leak-off point to not be exactly at the minimum principal stress um, because there's some tortuosity and there's some excess resistance in the fluid associated with going through the perforations. Uh, and again, this is magnified if you're using high viscosity fluid. It's not necessarily, you know, like water, would you, really not an issue uh, as far as that. But uh, so... So normally, as a sort of a first, as sort of a first uh, uh, pass, this leak-off point can be assumed. You know, again, ignoring the things we just talked about, can be assumed to be S3. Okay. So, if you're doing an extended leak-off test, right, then you could you would continue. And eventually, you'd get to some f point where the pressure would drop, and this is called the, the, the uh, formation breakdown pressure, okay? And so what, what happens here, you see this inflection because you're, you're, you're injecting fluid at a constant rate, and you have a constant volume, so the pressure goes up, right? Then all of a sudden, you see this inflection because you've added a little volume in that you've initiated a fracture. So you see this slight drop, okay? But you're still pumping fluid in faster than the fracture is gro growing, so the pressure still goes up, okay? But at the formation breakdown pressure, now you're propagating a, fa a fracture faster than you can pump fluid in, and therefore the pressure drops, okay? And then at some point, you'll reach a relatively constant... Uh, this is where you basically filled your fracture with fluid, and it's propagating at more or less a constant rate, and this is called uh, the fracture propagation fr pressure. And you'll notice that the fracture propagation pr pressure 
is roughly equal, you know, to the leak off point. Like they, they correspond relatively well. So this is sort of your second measure that's, that tells you what your minimum horizontal principal stress, right? So if you remember, we did talk briefly, we were talking about the failure of rocks and with respect to hydraulic fracturing. The, the initially, uh, once you have a, a short crack, relatively short crack, it's a toughness dominated regime, but once the fracture grows to some length, then it just transitions into sort of a strength dominated regime. So if you're, if you're pumping fluid at constant pressure and the crack is moving along, then that it's moving along that the pressure that you're pumping at is approximately equal to uh, the minimum stress, okay? And so then we'll talk a little bit more about this part in detail, but then if we were to then shut in the well, okay, so we were basically to shut it in and stop pumping fluid, then you'd see some decay in the pressure and We'll examine this region in a little more detail here in just a second, uh, but we can also infer um, what the what the minimum horizontal stress there. So we sort of have three indications from this test, uh, an extended leak off test. The first one being the leak off point, which is probably the least reliable. Uh, the second one being the fracture propagation pressure, and then again we'll look at in just a second from the, um, when we shut in the well, what we can infer about that. It has to do with the fact that the fracture closes. And we can, if we can measure the pressure at exactly when the fracture closes, you can imagine this is the equilibrium point between the fluid pressure and the pressure required to propagate a fracture, then, then that's the, also a good indication of the minimum, um, of the minimum uh, principal stress, so S3. 